I know guys, I know, I know. I said on the other video for the TT that um, I would not be doing this, um, but I'm only human and I'm weak. I have my weakness and uh, I could not resist and I did it. Well, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna take you through it. Uh, so what is this about? So what this is about is about an upgrade that the TT is gonna have. So. As you can already see what I'm working, you can probably guess what the upgrade is or where the upgrade is going to be. Yes, it's going to be brakes and I think some of you probably can already guess what it is because I believe I mentioned it on the other video. So, the TT obviously is fitted with the standard uh, 1.8 brakes, nothing special, 312 millimeters, I believe, uh, discs normal calipers and pads and all that good stuff so i haven't done a lot yet guys to be fair i've only removed this clip here the, the, that holds the pipe i removed that one in there and I'm, i've undone the brake line which luckily was not corroded so he, he released really quick um and uh, now to do this upgrade uh, you need at least to have if i'm not wrong 18 inch uh, wheels I'm lucky with that because I have 19, so I'm okay. And what the upgrade is, let me show you. There he is, yes, the famous 17. Where is the mark for the calipers? The 17 ZR brake calipers from Brembo. Uh, these pads, these ones, they came from a Porsche. Uh, they are installed on Porsches, uh, I believe these are the same calipers on the Q7s and some other makers, some other brands. Uh, I bought this kit on eBay for a long time, I was looking, but they were very, very expensive. And if you would try to buy things separately, like buy just the calipers, then the discs, then the brackets to adapt that, then the lines, everything will become really expensive to close to about a thousand pounds uh, you could get it for less but somewhere around there you could get them for about 600 pounds as well um, some used stuff like this now these as you can see they are used but these discs uh, so the discs guys is the standard uh, 334 millimeters uh, brake discs that comes on the 3.2 v6 uh, they are slightly bigger than the on the 1.8 but the, the discs will fit. That's the discs that this uh, takes. And these discs, guys, yes, they are a little bit rusty, but they are literally brand new. Uh, the guy that sold them said he made about 500 miles on them and he took them off. I don't know the reasons why, but that doesn't really matter. Um, but this is what we're going to fit. And I bought all these here, except the nuts, the nuts are from the TT, the bolts. But I bought the discs, calipers with the pads brackets and braided lines everything for 450 pounds so i thought it was a really good deal and uh and guys what we're going to do now is we're going to install this uh i'm going to see if this is a straight fitment with the brackets should be uh the ttmk1 is based on the golf 4 platform uh these ones i believe they were installed on a golf 4 uh, it should be a straight fitment obviously we're going to clean everything make sure everything is uh, proper done. I'm going to replace a few things uh, like the dust uh, The dust plates at the back of the discs. I, I want to replace that. I don't have those yet So this is going to be done over the next few days uh, But I think it's going to be a really nice upgrade for the TT uh, You might not going to drive too fast, but it should break. Okay, so I'm going to take you through bit by bit what we're going to do and uh, That's what we're going to do <laughs> that's it there's nothing else uh, to say okay so the caliper is out guys i'm not going to be here show you or explain you how to remove a caliper if you don't know how to take a caliper then i do apologize but you might should not be uh, tackling uh, this job okay um so uh, the caliper is out and uh, obviously i blocked the brake line like that because i'm gonna get a uh, different oil so the oil is going to be completely uh, replaced with a different oil. I'm gonna probably use, let me see, because I should still have some here from the M5. Uh, when I did the oil change on the M5, I'm not gonna have enough oil though. I should have the brake fluid I've used 
on the M5, there it is. So this is the one I want to put on the TT. This is the one I want to put on the TT, okay? Is the Type 2200 from ATE. Uh, was this or the Castrol? Uh, but the Castrol is extremely expensive and this one is probably just as good. Um, so that's what I'm gonna use. Um, and yeah, so but I blocked it for now because I don't want the oil to just be draining there on the floor. Uh, although I got that catch drain there. But uh, the next thing we're gonna do is gonna try to remove these dust cap because they are completely destroyed. Uh, there's three bolts and one there. Don't know how easy this is gonna come out. Let's give it a go and see what happens. Okay, and what I'm gonna do uh, before we even put the socket on on this is we're gonna do this, I don't know, on the head of the bolt. probably a little bit of this in there you know how much is going to help and we're going to use these actually x sockets because if you use the multi-point there's more of a chance that you will slip i'm not sure which size is this it looks like it's that right jesus they are bad they are extremely bad. Ooh. Yeah, no chance. No chance. There's no head on this thing, literally. Yeah. Oh, damn it. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Yeah, the heads are completely gone on that. Damn it. Okay, so one came off. This one right there at the top. The other ones are getting stubborn. So let's see who's gonna win. Let's see who's gonna win. Let's see who's gonna win this game. I'm not willing to lose. Uh, let me see which tools more I have. Two out, one to go. A combination of hammering the bolt, push this uh, left hand sort of what you call it twisted things bolts removers whatever you call it uh, so there's one left that's gonna try to get the last one out and there you go a little bit more hammering and uh, the last one is out right so now what we need to do is Clean this hub, clean everything, wait for the next, uh, wait for the dust cap to arrive. I've just noticed that bolt that holds the disc in place is broken. I might try to drill it out, perhaps, I don't know. Or I might just put it back the way it was. It doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, it needs a little bit of a... Quite a lot of rest that we're gonna have to clean. So yeah, let's clean it and then do the other side. I gave a good clean, special to this uh, reluctor ring as well. Give a good clean, already drilled the screw out and cleaned the threads. And uh, it's ready for a new screw or for a new bolt, shall I say. 
and uh, yeah, that's gonna carry on. Okay, guys, and few days, few days. Blah, 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 blah. Let me start again. A few days later, we back onto the TT. Uh, as you can see now, uh, we do have the discs already in place. They've been cleaned uh, both sides. They are not 100%, 100%, but the rest, uh, the pad will take that off. Uh, that is just temporarily because I didn't have any countersunk screws for this. I do have now stainless ones to put in here, which we will do when we put the brake in place. But at the moment, I'm still waiting for parts before I'm able to put the discs because we are waiting for the uh, dust shields. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I went shopping and I have something for this side because I knew this was the case because uh, I had the car on the elevators and I knew that was the case. Uh, that, as you can see, that ball joint in there right there the, there's no play on it but the dust cap is gone so i got a replacement unfortunately audi no longer sells parts for this car well it might sell some parts it definitely doesn't sell the ball joints i rang them they said nope we don't have nothing stock and they are they've been dropped we don't manufacture them anymore so oh well I got some aftermarket stuff, that's why I got. Uh, but this side is also ready to take the dust cap, uh, the dust shield, and off we go. Um, and I got some other bits for this side as well, which I will take you uh, through in due course. In the meantime, we're going to work on the rear, as you have already seen. Um, so the rear was really bad, the brakes. Uh, one of the brakes, which was this side, actually, you can see, uh, look at the disc, this side has been overheating. This side is binding really, really bad. Um, and the pads are nearly, nearly gone. Probably because it's binding all the time. Uh, yeah, this side is really bad. Um, you feel the car breaking uh, as you drive it. <coughs> so this is out. Uh, obviously the other side uh, as well. The other side was not binding. You can see the difference in the disc. But obviously it still has way more pads. But that doesn't really matter. We have... All brand new stuff to put here and the discs we have for this i will show you when it's time to put them back in but for now let's going to take the calipers these calipers they're going to have to be completely dismantled and refurbished uh, so that's what we're going to do okay i do apologize for the background noise uh, but uh, i'm not going to take too long here anyway i'm just dismantling the caliper uh, so the the carrier is already cleaned and painted i will show you later uh, this obviously we're gonna have to dismantle to change all the seals inside etc etc uh, and the way these pistons uh, come out because you have the end brake as part of the system uh, we need to get these uh, pulled out turning uh, is like a screw so we're gonna see that as I turn the piston comes out let's see if I pull out there so you can see you see the piston coming out <coughs> see so we're gonna Carry on until the piston completely jumps out. There we go. Already leaking oil everywhere. Should have a tray in the side on the end of the side or something like that, but Yes, there it is, and it came out. We're gonna have to dismantle all of this to take this uh, screw side to put on the new pistons. I have new pistons for this, regardless of this being good or not. They are a little bit rusty in there already. Yeah, it's not very smooth in there, so we're gonna replace them anyway. And uh, yeah, we're gonna carry on dismantling this and. Uh, then I guess I'll show you before we put everything back on. Okay, and while the caliper dries out, um, I'll take it through a couple things. Uh, one, I'm not going to change this. Um, they are not too bad, but they start going there. Uh, but uh, we're not going to change it, uh, mainly because to change this, I'll have to take the bearing out. And... Uh, I'm not very keen to pull this bearing out so I'm, not, I'm just gonna leave it 
Uh, I might give her a spray with black just to make it look better for a week. <laughs> uh, but the truth is, guys, and believe me or not, I have them here. They are here, look. The ones for the rear. But unfortunately, I'm not going to use them because of the reasons I've just told you. So, what I'm going to take you through now quickly is, let me see if I can put the phone here somehow, is on how to dismantle the piston. So, to dismantle the piston, we're going to remove the circlip inside. Sorry guys, this was not planned. Of course, it was not planned, so the phone is not very happy with me. Like so. So, we're going to remove this circlip. Then, we see what comes up next. The thing. Then we have, let's take everything in order. Then I have a couple shims. Okay. This is a bearing. This little thing is a linear bearing. So we'll just put this in the same order as they come out. So then we put everything back on the way it should go. And now, if I'm not mistaken, come on. There we go. This piston comes out. A lot of crap back here. Look at that. See. See the rest. We're gonna have to clean this. Let me make sure we have. So this, that's it. The piston we don't need anymore. We have a brand new one here. Okay. Uh, but we're gonna clean this first. Let me see if I can. I'm gonna try to send this out. Let me see if I have a, uh, these seals first. Just hold a second. Okay. So there is all cleaned. Uh, we do have indeed a new seal for it, so we're going to use a little bit of this uh, assembly grease and we're going to put the seal, this make sure it's in the right position, so it can, as you can see the chamfer is like that, it needs to be like that, you see, it's sort of raising towards this end, that's how it should go in, okay. Okay, so now we can put this, just put a little bit more, I don't want to put too much, just a tiny bit. So this is running okay. Looks like it is. So now we're gonna put everything else back in. Okay, so let's gonna proceed. Let me just uh, clean these things. Come on.
race all back on and this is ready to go into the thingy uh, all you need now is these two rubber caskets uh, but the caliper is still drying a little bit so we're gonna let it finish the dry and then we will assemble the caliper in the meantime I think I can put the the runner the bracket and uh, some other bits and bobs one part of the caliper the kit comes with everything but there is one part of the caliper that I'm not going to uh, touch uh, which is that part right at the back where the cable for the handbrake swivels which comes with new seals as well I'm not going to dismantle that bit I'm going to leave that uh, it's not leaking it's, it's, it's moving absolutely freely so I'm not going to worry too much with that part um, and this thing doesn't come with caps for the nipples it comes with new, new nipples which is good but it doesn't come with the rubber caps ah oh, damn it it comes with these ones but I don't like these ones it comes with these don't know if this is the ones that's supposed to go there probably it is but they look so bad uh, we'll think about something no worries okay okay and uh, we're gonna assemble the piston so when uh, uh, when I painted these I put some masking tape in there so no paint goes in there where it pushes into the pads ready to put the new uh, breather we're gonna take this off there go so all clean inside Well, there's nothing in there, it looks clean to me. So we're gonna take this off. We're gonna take this tape off and then carry on. Okay, lubricate a little bit of this rubber seal. It's gonna push the rubber seal in there. Okay. Rubber seal is in place. All we have left now, all we have left now is this rubber cap in there. But I think this one needs to go first. Otherwise, then the piston doesn't go in. I think I'm doing this wrong. It needs to go a little bit on the piston first. Come on. You need to slide in there. I'm sure you do slide. Come on. Don't be shy and get your hands in there. There you go. Twisted in there. Let's go. Ah, that's better now. Now a little bit of grease here on this thread for the handbrake.
we're just going to screw this. If we've got this right, we're going to be able to screw this all the way up. And then when it gets to the top, there we go. The rubber just goes into place. There we go. Beautiful. in there we go can you see the when I push in there and if I just keep doing it like so it's gonna start to come out there we go okay guys and I'm just start to put everything back on and this is starts to look like a brake system now uh, yes the dust chilled guys I know is not a proper job uh, ideally I would take it off but I'm not gonna take the bearing to replace this no chance so that's gonna have to stay um, I'm just stopping here now to take you through uh, two main points uh, the bolts that holds the carrier to the have are 100 Newton meters plus 90 degrees I'm going to skip the 90 degrees, I'm just going to give 125 Newton meters, that's it. And then you have the two little um, 13 millimeter heads bolts here that holds the actually caliper to the carrier. Uh, they are 25, okay. Um, these discs are the Brembo Extra and the pads we're going to use, let me get the pads. And here they are, the DBA uh, brake pads. Uh, no publicity, it's just what I got. I um, had the exact same, well, not the same, but the same brand for the front, and I had the same discs and uh, the Brembo Extra for the front. Obviously, with the upgrade we are doing, we're not going to use those discs. So, those pads and discs, I'm going to have to sell them or something like that. But for now, let's kind of put the brakes, the pads in, and uh, and put the caliper back in place. And here he is guys, one is done, all in place, and uh, now I'm going to do the other side, but obviously I'm not going to show you because it's exactly the same thing, um, that's about it, so it starts to looking good. And here it is, both sides now completed there he is okay so I finished this yesterday really late it was about nine o'clock at night when I finished this um, but guys now let's gonna move to what this video really is about well, to the sherry on top of the cake which is obviously the front brakes um, so I just got the package literally through the mail with the new dust shields so we're going to remove this disc, install the dust shield and then put the disc back on, put the correct bolt um, and, uh, and I'm going to take you through how I'm going to do that on this side. Uh, there's a couple things on the other side that are slightly different that I'm going to do as well, um, but I will show you when I'm there. Uh, but for this side, that's the side I'm going to show you the, the thing, the lot. So, so yeah, let's kind of remove that disc and put the dust shield in place. Okay, shield in place, hub cleaned, that's going to install the disc. Disc is in place, now we're going to install the spacer with the clean bolts. This bolt was so rusty. Um, the hub is one of those, the hub, the spacer is one of those spacers that bolts into the hub and then the wheel bolts into the spacer. Um, 
I don't think you need spacers to run these big calipers. You might need if your wheel is not big enough or is not deep enough. Uh, you definitely need bigger wheels, uh, uh, or at least you need, I believe you need 18 and above. Um, but yeah, we're gonna put this space, I'm just gonna leave the car the way it was, so I've cleaned everything. We're gonna put it in place, and I'm gonna tie everything up to about 150 newton meters. Okay, and I forgot, I'm gonna need the caliper in place in order to lock this disc, in order to tie that to 150, and uh, mention, uh, talking about 150, I know some of you are gonna say, that's way too much, that's how much I'm, I'm gonna do it. You guys, if you feel that you shouldn't do 150, don't do 150. So the next step now, because everything is absolutely ready, is we're gonna put, install the caliper. Okay, and the bracket is partially in place. Now, I do not have the torques for these, um, for this sort of uh, adaptation. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the bracket to the hub, the same as the original caliper, uh, carrier uh, bolts to this hub which is 125 I'm not gonna do 125 I'm gonna do 130 okay so we're gonna torque this at 130 And now let's go and install the Ashley caliper. Okay, and just before we put the caliper in place, I'm just going to run you through a couple of things. I don't know, I haven't done enough research to know if this is the correct way of doing it, but I believe this is how it should work. So you have, to start with, you have three different piston sizes. So a six spot, and you have three different sizes. Uh, I believe they are 32, 36 and 38 mil. Uh, I believe the disc should meet the small pot first, the small uh, piston first, but even uh, that said, your bleeders should be facing up because the air is, uh, inside the, the caliper is going to travel up, so that's where you're going to bleed. If you try to put the pistons the other way around, your bleeders are going to facing down, and I don't think that would be the correct way of doing it. Obviously, if, if that was the case, I would have to put this caliper on the other side. Um, but I don't think the bleeders should face in down, so this is how it's gonna go. So let's kind of put it in place. Okay, a uh, quick setback, that's been a ready result. I was not aware of this. So with the original uh, dust caps, dust caps, dust shields, uh, the caliper doesn't fit, so I had to cut that bit off. I don't know if you can see from here. I had to take this little bit off. I've cut that in two or three times, a little bit of time until uh, the caliper would fit. We're gonna just spray a little bit of uh, amarid to protect that uh, metal exposed from rust. And then, yes, we'll put the caliper in place. Okay, so the torque, according to uh, Porsche, uh, the torque for the caliper to the hub on a Porsche is 190 Newton meters. So that's exactly how much I'm going to torque the caliper to this bracket. It's going to be 190. There it is. 190. This is a big caliper. <laughs> now let's going to put probably the brake line and then the pads in place. Okay, so there it is. Braided line is tightened. Um, I do this by hand, guys. I don't have nothing to measure the torque on a place like this. I just do it by hand. Just make sure you don't over torque. Just remember, in this case, you are tying a metal, a stainless bolt, if you will, to an aluminum block. So just be careful with that. And now we're going to install the pads. Now the pads, I'm going to put the pads that came with the kit. They are Frodo pads and they still have plenty of material left. So I'm just going to reuse them. Put a little bit of uh, grease, really. 
sorry about the interruption all i'm going to do is give them a, a quick brush off quick cleaning and put a little bit of uh, uh, grease on some of the contact points and that's about it really and look at this and once this is all done you do have one bolt there that usually i would do this by hand but they want 25 newton meters so we're going to do so we're going to do 25 newton meters there we go and now yes the thingy is all in place and now all we need to do is to the other side and then not forget to tie those bolts wheels in place and we should be good for the test drive but it's going to do the other side and i'm going to catch up in a couple things that i need to do slightly different on that side well one thing slightly different different the other thing is just something we're going to replace but i will just catch up when i'm about to do it okay here we are on the other side and the first thing i'm going to capture that i said i would have to get done is this so although there is no play on it i knew this was like this because i had the car on the ramps a few times to check the car etc etc uh, even when we did the exhaust so we did a good check underneath and one of the things i've noticed was this there is no play on it though it's still a quite tight fit but obviously this is no good so we're going to install a new one unfortunately we're going to have to go after market because howdy no longer sell sells these parts for this car um, Unfortunately, it looks like they discontinued to manufacture parts for this, so we're going to have to just use an aftermarket, but it is what it is. So we're going to replace this, and then, yes, we'll carry on installing the brakes. Right, guys, I saw them tight, but this one, whew, a lot of hammering, and it just doesn't move. A little bit of this should sort the problem, though. look at this it's looking really great really good um, so the bit that I need to modify on this side guys is this so the original caliper has only one uh, brake wear sensor um, the Porsche and the the Q7 etc where these brakes are fitted it does have one sensor on each pad one here and one there and for five quid I bought the actually sensor with the two wear sensors there. I think I'm gonna have to modify this bracket here slightly. I took the bolt off because I think it's gonna be on the way. So we're gonna have to bend it over a little bit, uh, try to make it to fit nicely. Um, and yeah, so that's one of the things that obviously on the other side does not apply. Okay, we're gonna now bleed the brakes. This is the fluid I'm gonna use. Uh, Miss is gonna help me. She's not very pleased, but it is what it is. So let's gonna get it done. And what a nightmare, guys. What a nightmare. So, right. Bleeded the front brakes, moved to the rear brake, passenger side, and I saw a small leak of oil on the floor. I thought, where's this oil coming from? So when I checked, it was leaking from here. As you can see, this is heavily corroded in there. So, but I've seen this before I put it back on. And I thought, okay, maybe I'm going to tie this banjo bolt. So here goes a banjo bolt. So I thought I'm gonna tie it a little bit more. Right, as soon as I did it, look at that. I don't know if you can see. You're gonna see the threads in there. Yeah, it just pulled the threads out. Now I was to uh, try to see if I could open a bigger uh, hole, uh, re-thread, use a different banjo bolt. But to be fair with you. I just went this morning to my local uh, scrapyard, not local actually. I spent the rest of the afternoon yesterday trying to find a caliper locally. I could buy a brand new uh, locally, but it was pretty much 80 quid. And I thought that's a little bit expensive. So uh, today I went to a scrapyard that is about 30 miles away from here. Uh, and they had a couple of TTs in there. And I just got one this morning, just got it all painted as well. So this obviously now is rubbish. I got it painted, uh, just moved the piston and the seals, etc. to this piston, uh, to this um, caliper. 
and now we're gonna put it back I don't have the missus today to help me bleed in the brakes but surely it will find a way um, but yeah we're gonna put it back on and then finish bleeding the brakes but yeah we had a little bit of a setback here with this caliper um, hope the other one is not leaking as well I haven't seen nothing there yesterday so hopefully that one is sealing okay and the brother up and the replacement is now in place and the car is ready to finish uh, the bleeding procedure and then go to the road And a week later, we're still at this <laughs> at this stage. Uh, what I put myself into, uh, this has been anything but troubles, uh, issues after issues. Um, so, right, let me where to start. First of all, the wheels. Uh, as you've seen, I removed the spaces at the front. I'll get there as well in a bit. Uh, but the spaces at the front have been removed um, because I'm not going to need them anymore. Well, <laughs> I will, but. Hold on. So my actual wheels, they no longer fit. So the wheels I have, uh, or I had on the car, uh, was these wheels here. That's the spacers, one spacer, the other the other side is these 19 inch uh, wheels. I actually like them, uh, but I want to downsize for 18s because I want to have a little bit more tire uh, than these wheels. Uh, I want a little bit more uh, tire. Um, but yeah, so they no longer fit because of the how much the caliper uh, comes out from the face of the the hub here so as you can see it comes is it the, the distance between here and here is about six six uh, millimeter uh, 60 millimeters or six centimeters nearly two and a half inches um, and yeah because of that the wheels no longer fit um, and uh, in order for me to fit those wheels I actually bought them because I, I need to drive the car I actually bought a yeah I know don't laugh I bought 30 millimeter spacers um, that's the only way to get to get clearance to install those wheels um, they're gonna look bad I know they're gonna probably uh, come uh, out from the wheel arch I hope not but as I said it's just to get me out of trouble um, the spacers that I had actually on the car was this well, I saw that you saw them on the floor is this 20 millimeters and even with this 20 millimeters uh, my actual wheels still not clear from the calipers um, the reason I want the car back on the road <coughs> is because actually last week I went to pick up a wheel that I found someone locally selling them uh, I left a hundred pounds deposit came home to try the wheel still not clear then I had to drive back to drop the wheel so at least if I have the TT drivable drive drivable um, I can take the TT there and then uh, raise the TT take a wheel off try the wheel if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't and I can do that and I can do everything with one journey now some of you are gonna say well you can easily find wheels online and get them customized to your setup yes I can but I'm not willing at the moment I'm not willing to spend over 800 pounds which was the cheapest I found that can be machined or fabricated uh, custom uh, with the the measurements you need um yeah it's about 800 pounds uh, look this is an old car <laughs> it's a car that i want to put on the track is i don't want brand new wheels in there it's gonna it's gonna completely uh stand out from the rest of the car i do honestly prefer to put some uh, used wheels with a few scratches and why not it doesn't really bother me but go for brand new wheels i'm not very keen for that so for now i'm going to continue uh, searching for used wheels uh, so that was problem number one um problem number two was when i removed this cal the when i removed the spaces at the front they were all tightened they are all loose now the ones at the back are loose but they're still in place but they were all tightened to 150 uh, newton meters um and I did that before I put the caliper in place. I locked the wheel with a 
uh, bar against the floor, whatever. I tied them all up to 115 meters. And now when I was to take them off, the brakes were already uh, bleeded. And I've asked uh, the missus uh, to press the brake pedal for me to undo the bolts. And from my disbelief, I had no brakes. Um, I thought maybe I need to leave it off vacuum, started the engine, pumped the brakes a couple times, still no brakes. Uh, so this side actually breaks a little bit. Uh, the other side of the front breaks nothing. And then the rear ones, which have the engine running, gauges, uh, gears engaged, then press the brake. As you can see, they have been rotating, but they don't really break. I can literally start the car, put my foot to the floor uh, with the, on the first gear, and the engine just idling, still holding, uh, still be able to rotate the wheels. It doesn't shut the engine off. Um, so yeah, it's been a little bit of a nightmare. So at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm doing a different approach. I'm using the actually maxi sys with the and going through and going through the bleeding uh, procedure. Okay, so I'm gonna do these um, uh, and follow the screen basically and see if these help. See if these help. Oops. Uh, see if the, this helps to bleed the brakes. Um, I do. Um, I do accept if I ha if if with these calipers, I will have a little bit of more pedal travel because obviously there's more uh, there's a higher quantity of oil that needs to be pushed in order to uh, clamp these calipers at the front. Um, so I do understand that I might have to press the pedal a little bit a little bit more than before, but no brakes at all. That just makes <laughs> no sense whatsoever. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and hopefully uh, I'll get this uh, bleeded properly today. Uh, the spacers, they should also arrive today, to be fair with you. Um, so it might be that with a little bit of luck, I'll get the car back on the floor and somehow drivable. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Okay guys, following day, the car is finally done. Now, um, things didn't went exactly as planned. Um, it was a nightmare to bleed these brakes, uh, even with the tool. Uh, that didn't really make a difference uh, using um, using that uh, procedure. Um, I ended up having to bleed the master cylinder right at the top. There is two uh, there is two bleeders uh, which I had to bleed. Um, the car was breaking before I bleed the master cylinder. The car was breaking, was definitely locking the wheels and everything. Uh, but the pedal one was really spongy, and second was. Uh, it was actually biting or was actually grabbing the calipers really at the bottom so it was a lot of travel now I'm, I was expecting a little bit of travel or extra travel because obviously uh, there is way more volume of fluid to move uh, at the front uh, before the calipers uh, start to push the pads against the disc so I was expecting a little bit but not how this was at the start so and now um, I do have a tiny bit more travel um, than before, but uh, I think, well, I will definitely get used to it, no problem at all. Uh, it breaks absolutely perfect. Uh, we're gonna go uh, for a quick test drive. I'll take you with me. Um, but I just thought I would show you how we how they fit. Now they do not have yet the 30 millimeters spacers uh, at the moment. Um, actually, uh, Helder, my friend, he came to help me to bleed the to bleed the <coughs> the top. Um, the master cylinder and um, he actually brought some more 20 millimeter spacers and at the moment I do have 40 so I have plenty of clearance now which I don't need that much but now I have 40 millimeters uh, spacers at the front uh, obviously this is just temporary um, um, the wheel is coming so further out that actually when I turn like this uh, the wheel is actually touching the line inside and, and if I turn too much is touching on a, on a little bit of a more of a bump the wheel is touching the wheel arch so we can't really uh, uh, be like this but temporarily that's more than okay for now um but that's it guys is 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 really is done so we're gonna go for a quick test drive i'll take it with me guys and we're gonna see how it looks how it breaks uh, i only went uh, around the village yesterday so didn't really had a chance to uh, test it too much uh, but we're gonna go today and see how it goes
for about five minutes and uh, I do apologize bro for the vibration on the phone right now uh, but it's, it's the only really good place I have to put the phone at the moment but anyway so um, if you guys are interested on this board uh, be aware at least that you might gonna have a different pedal feeling um, and what I do have here um, how to explain you this um, the car feels so how, how let me explain it so the brake is is very good to start with I really like it I'm gonna really get used to this um, so obviously I can't really compare to what I used to have before uh, because the brakes were completely shot uh, I had a, as I as I showed you was it was a, a caliper binding in the back constantly braking uh, the, the pedal was the brakes were really bad but what I do have now that is working properly is as soon as you touch the pedal uh, it's not like if you really have travel as a such as soon as you press it I can start to feel the the the, the car braking but you need to push the pedal a little bit more um, than what you normally need uh, for the car to start to brake uh, or for you to really feel some sort of braking power but the interesting thing is I love the feedback on the pedal so the pedal is not firm firm um, but it's not spongy it's, how to put it across so you, you, as soon as you press the brake you start to feel the car braking uh, but at this point is really just a very very subtle or very uh, gentle braking as, as you press a little bit more it starts to grab more and from the moment you, you really start to feel the car braking up to the moment where you can lock the wheels there is there is no lot of travel and there is a um, there is a kind of a feedback, if you will. It's like if you can control the brakes really, really easy. Um, where sometimes with a pedal that is too hard, it breaks and then you need to be very sensitive with the brakes. These, it looks like you are able to maybe jog a little bit more uh, with the pedal to control the brakes. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, yeah, it needs fuel. <laughs> I'm gonna say that the brakes look very similar to the M5, uh, but not exactly the same. I get more feedback, if you wish, uh, on this car than on the M5. Uh, yeah, look, it's, I touch the pedal, and you, you can feel the car straight away braking, but it, it carry on rolling, sort of. And then I press a little bit more, very gentle, and you start to really feel it braking. But you get a kind of a feedback on the pedal. It's real, I, I tell you why, it's actually nice. I actually like it. And I think on the track it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic, I hope. I hope. But if you wanna do this mod guys, you've seen what it takes. Um, all I need to get now is the wheels, which I know uh, I'm not showing you that on this video, but the wheels are just the wheels. I will might just either make a quick video when I find some wheels for this or I'll just make a post somewhere or I'll catch that I'll catch that later on a different video uh, but for the brakes guys this is how you do it so that's uh, what you need to do if you want to install uh, Rainbow's uh, 17Z uh, on your Mark IV uh, Volkswagen um, or MK1 TTs uh, the TTs uh, this uh, generation is based on the uh, uh, Mark IV chassis, so yeah. Uh, but I believe you can fit this on the Mark V, Mark VI. I think there's adapters out there for all of this. Um, and you, you can, I, I believe you can also, you have also adapters for the 18s uh, Z. But this is what it is, guys. Um, so we know for the ado, uh, let's kind of wrap up this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope there's some information here you might can find useful. Uh, if you do still have any questions, any comments, you know exactly how it works, just put them below, right below, and like always, thanks for watching.
Right guys, this is actually a few weeks later and uh, I felt the need of capturing this. Um, luckily I haven't, delete, I, haven't, I haven't deleted any of the clips for the video for this, so I can just uh, add this clip right at the end. So hopefully you got to the point where you're going to watch this. Um, and uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because the brakes are changing and they are changing drastically. So what used to be, uh, I don't want to use the word spongy because I don't like the word spongy. Um, but the brakes were definitely kind of soft um, as I explained. They are now changing. They are getting harder and harder and they are just slowly uh, coming back to what I believe the brakes should be. Um, I don't think they are there, quite there yet. But they are definitely getting there. And I think the reason I've been thinking about why they are changing. And they start to really get like this over the last few days. Um, initially for the first week or so I didn't really uh, notice too much. But uh, I've been driving the car a little bit more over the last few days. Because I went, for example, this morning I went to Grantham to try some wheels on the car. See if they would clear the front calipers. They didn't. So at the moment I'm still running the other wheels with a 40 millimeter spacers, um, but I've been trying to uh, to try to get some wheels. But yeah, so I've been driving a little bit more, and I think that's what is helping for the brake to change. So one of the things I've noticed as I've been looking to this is, as I'm going to show you as well, you can see that the the disc is now start to get that shiny sort of uh, surface. Uh, so the rest, so the, the paths are completely clear in the rest. Uh, but another thing I've noticed as well is, I don't know if you're going to be able to you see all that dust. So I think that excessive dust, if you wish, obviously one is clearing, is cleaning the disc. But second, and I think that's the reason why I was having that sort of um, uh, soft pedal, is because I think the pads are slowly seating properly on the disc so i now believe that when initially i put them in perhaps when i was uh, pressing the brake pedal and as the as the calipers were clamping the pads maybe the pad the pads maybe on the other side on this side i'm not sure maybe they were not making contact with the disc all at once maybe the pad was slightly worn in a different way or whatever and was touching like in the ends or whatever and then as you would press more and more it would grab more and more and obviously as they are wearing now they are getting more and more contact surface with the disc yeah so the the pedal is definitely changing for the better uh, it's a different feeling now and i think it's just going to get better and better it definitely starts to get better over the last few days um so I thought just about to put this out in case if you think if you if you think that the last clip is how the brakes would feel forever, and uh, I didn't want to leave you with the wrong impression. Um, yeah, so I, I I have now a feeling I might capture this when I do the video for the wheels if I do a video for the wheels uh, or whatever. But um, I'll my uh, I'll my mention that if they get. Uh, to the point where they are just normal brakes if you will uh, but i have a feeling that's where they're going to get uh, but yeah so i just thought about capturing this and now yes we know for the do see you next time